646 people have come out of the cold to watch the East and West play in the All-Star game, and it's all tied up at the half. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien, and once again, welcome to At the Half. And our theme today is a predictable one, All-Star Weekend. We'll show you yesterday's awesome display of slam dunk competition and a look at the guys who huffed and puffed their way through the Legends game, including Tommy Heinsohn. And we'll also see why Michael Glenn of the Atlanta Hawks is an all-star in his own right. But first, the fans were treated to some spectacular action and reintroduced to some spectacular former players yesterday. And it all began with the Legends game. The big news yesterday was that the city of Indianapolis turned Market Square into Reunion Arena for the first annual Legends Classic. Although they are gray, slightly hobbled, and sometimes in need of a helping hand, the stars of yesterday proved that although their bodies have slowed, their minds have not forgotten. They still possess the skills, and yes, they still have the desire. For most of the game, it was a desire for fun as well, friendship and practical jokes. But down the stretch, the competitive spirit took over behind Earl the Pearl and Tommy Heinsohn. The East outlasted the West 63 to 53. Congratulations, how did it feel out there today? Well, it felt pretty good. When you retire, you leave the game, you leave the players and the guys that you've been living with for so long. And then you come back and, you know, an event like this, and it, you know, it's all a real warm feeling for us. After the old-timers game, the youngsters and one elder statesman took to the floor and proved that actions do indeed speak louder than words. surprise was the early success of hometown favorite Terrence Stansbury who with the help of team Stansbury advanced into the semis the team liked that one not to be outdunked the Irving clan lent support to its family doctor who responded with this Last year's champion Larry Nance chose the artistic route, but that only painted him in a corner as he failed to advance to the finals. That honor was reserved for Mr. J, who of course had his own personal coach. And Dominique Wilkins, who took the early lead with this. And although Michael came back and displayed great stuff, he was no match for the soaring hawk who went for perfect scores and flew away with the dunk title. You're going for 50 every time, weren't you? This time? Yeah, I was trying to go for 50 every time. And then, like I said, the guys who didn't make it, like Orlando and, and Griffith, really was telling me different things to do. They said, Nick, you got to go strong. And that's what I did, and they really helped me a lot. What's it like being the human highlight film? It's fun. <laughs> it was fun, all right. He picked up 12 grand for his efforts, but he told me he would have given away that money to be on the East team. Now, something you rarely get to see at competitions like this, we're going to take you live into the East locker room where Casey Jones is the ball is here. Talking to his and, players uh, at halftime Jay strategy. Larry come down and set the pick. And then we got the pick down here, and this guy comes out. Say so we hit here, and then we go away. Now we can push in there or drop it in, but this guy's going away, and this man's coming up. But we want to, if we can get in here and get stopped, then we got to drop the ball out here or here. But the longer we keep it, the more they pile up in the middle there, and then we got nothing going. But the more we move that ball, to the open guy, and the better shot we're going to get, or the wide open shot, or drive to the basket. Anybody got any thoughts on this? Jimmy? An attentive East team listening to Professor Jones there in the East locker room. Let's take you now over to the West locker room where Pat Riley is doing okay. something similar. Every shot in the second half, we're going into the winning situation now. In this area right here, we can just sort of contain and control uh the second shots and again it's a fundamental that you go right back to it's blocking out it's getting a good position and it's making an attack on the board we got 
16 points off of their seconds. The fact is they're crashing so hard. You've got two or three guys, you know, three or four guys going to the offensive boards. We contain this. All right, let's take you back over to the east now. Somebody's got to move in here to pick you up. And we drop it off. This guy goes, we can drop it here. And the same thing on that side, but that's a good play. So we drop it here, and then we don't have it, then drop it back down inside and go straight to the basket. We walk to the foul line, we get the, we'll get the playoff. Uh, whether it's Isaiah or Dennis or Jordan, uh, but, when, but when things get, uh, when we're running out of stuff and it gets ugly, then uh, let's see if we can go to something to uh, get us to the foul line or at least uh, get us a good shot out of it. Isaiah, you should have been on top, top of the, you know, I, I want you up here. So the three-point would have been more spectacular. That's a, that's a short shot right there. <laughs> Both coaches with their coats off, and the teams looking on attentively. It looks like they're serious about this. The score is all tied up 68-68. We'll be back with lots more as All-Star Weekend rolls on from the Hoosier Dome after a word from your local station. One of auto racing's premier events. Next Sunday, NASCAR's top drivers will face a grueling test of driving skill at speeds approaching 200 miles per hour. CBS Sports will present live flag to flag coverage of the 27th Daytona 500. Then, two familiar opponents who last season played yet another NBA classic will meet again. The world champion Boston Celtics visit the Los Angeles Lakers next Sunday on CBS Sports. This is CBS. I wanted to, to paint the most beautiful thing I could find. I had painted women before, animals, but nature, but never something like this, this beautiful sandwich that's put out by Schlatzky. So I, I painted the sandwich itself. I painted it different colors, and then I ate the sandwich. Because I ate the sandwich even with paint. I loved it. It tastes so much. I love Schlatzky's. I love paint. I love everything. <laughs> <laughs> work together as partners against crime. Michael Jordan of the Chicago Bulls and his East team, they're leaving the locker room, getting a last minute drink of water there, ready to go back out on the court to begin the second half, and we'll join them when they do. Coming up after today's All-Star Game is another edition of Sports Sunday. And for a report, let's go to Pat Summerall in New York City. Thank you, Pat. Back in New York, I'm Pat Summerall with a look ahead at our lineup for CBS Sports Sunday, which follows after the second half of the NBA All-Star Game. You'll see an exceptional field headlined by the likes of such record breakers as Carl Lewis, Mary Decker, now Mary Slaney, and Eamon Coughlin. They'll all compete at the U.S. Olympic Invitational Track and Field Meet. Also, we'll have a special preview of the upcoming World Figure Skating Championships. And on John Madden's journeys, John visits with one of golf's unique characters, the walrus, Craig Stadler. All of that and more coming up on CBS Sports Sunday. See you after the game, Pat. That's Sports Sunday. Thank you, Pat Summerall. That's Sports Sunday immediately following the NBA All-Star Game. Now, our final story on All-Star Weekend here is a very special one about a very special player who spends much of his time working with kids who have a handicap that doesn't allow them to enjoy the game of basketball the way you and I do. He is Mike Glenn, the best friend a lot of deaf kids have ever had. This is how most of us hear a basketball game. And this is how the deaf see it. The unmistakable sounds of basketball. You know, sometimes we tend to take those sounds for granted. 
but there is a large group of young people who have never heard those sounds and never will. They are deaf. But thanks to a veteran NBA player with roots here in the Georgia countryside, they are now getting closer to the game, almost close enough to hear it. I want to see your elbows in, not out, like this. Stan, I want, I want you to keep your elbows in. They call him yeah. the stinger. Mike Glenn makes his living stinging jump shots for Atlanta, but this is what he lives for, helping deaf athletes. When I was growing up, my father coached at Georgia School for the Deaf. So I went to practice with him, and the deaf kids adopted me. They just taught me their sign language. They taught me to play basketball. They treated me as though I were a deaf kid. So the contact and the sign language and the basketball all came together naturally. Whenever we'd have practices in basketball, he would want to do whatever they were doing. If I had them running the figure eight or just lining up shooting, Mike would want to get in line too. You got to fake that, the defensive player. Show him the basketball. In addition to here. conducting two summer move camps, move. Make he spends time okay. here in Cave Try Spring, again. Georgia, teaching those who would not have had the opportunity to learn the game. Okay. That was good, but he still didn't show the basketball. I want, no, not you, him. They learn how to shoot. Learn how to screen. Learn how to press in defense. Then play basketball a lot for fun. Willie Brown has fun, too. He is deaf. He is Glenn's star student and now a promising freshman at Hofstra. Mike Glenn was Willie's ticket to erase the barriers to be part of something special. Hofstra University recognized Willie Brown for the talent that he has, not the limitations that other people would put on him by saying, well, he's a deaf kid. Oftentimes well, our ears are on. deaf to the positive Girl. side of professional athletes, but Mike Glenn gives us reason okay. to Good. sit up Excellent. and listen. Excellent. A lot of times you'll have people say, well, he's a deaf guy, okay. he can't play, he can't do this. And we'll look for things that they can't do rather than the things that they can do. Okay, a little higher, a little higher. What's the message in all this? Translation, always try your best and you can do what you want in life. They are getting ready to play the second half here at the Hoosier Dome, and Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn are getting ready to go back to work as well. I'm Pat O'Brien. Thank you for joining us at the half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. The plan. Striking restorations. Exciting new construction. A rapidly developing downtown area. This year's host of the NBA All-Star Game. Indianapolis, a city with the imagination to dream about the future and the leadership to make it happen. We're all tied at halftime before a record crowd of 43,000 plus at the Hoosier Dome, 68 to 68. Before we talk about maybe the team situation, what's impressed you the most so far, Tom? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed this first half, mainly because I'm a devotee of fast break basketball, and we're seeing four outstanding pushmen at for both teams. Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, Richardson, and Nixon creating fast break opportunities. And uh, we're also seeing some great offensive rebounding by the East to keep them in the ballgame. All right, now to talk about that, let's take a look at the statistics. Now, the West is really out shooting the East, but that's deceiving because the point you just made, the second chance points, shows the East with a big edge. They have out-rebounded them by 10 off the offensive boards. And this is an example of it, Tom. Well, they have to contain the size of the West by everybody banging on the boards as much as they can. But look at them carve out some room as Moses comes over the top of everybody for the cramp. And as Isaiah Thomas, uh, he, he has a bruised thigh, we understand, his left thigh, and he may or may not play. Uh, knowing Isaiah Thomas, uh, he'll try to get in there. When we left you, he hit that three-point shot with one second to go. He was three for four from that range and tied the ball game up. He is a hot shooter. And, you know, uh, we haven't had a back-to-back -back winner in most valuable player awards uh, since 1958, and Isaiah Thomas has that opportunity right now. He is the leading scorer in the ball game. He has 17 points to lead the East. George Gervin, 15, leads the West. Isaiah has put the spark to the East team by creating the pace and also that uh, inside uh, fast break game, creating offensive rebound opportunities for the East. I asked Kareem going into this game, does it have any special meaning? He says, oh, I want to 